Hello, I'm going to be discussing a new machine learning model that we introduced in our recent paper, Neural Controlled Differential Equations for Irregular Time Series. Let's get started. So what's the quick summary? It's that well understood mathematics of controlled differential equations plus the existing Neural Ordinary Differential Equation model gives us a state-of-the-art model for time series, which we call the Neural Controlled Differential Equation model. Its key advantages are that it acts directly on time series, even in the general case of a regularly sampled, partially observed, multivariate data. It may be trained with what's known as adjoint backpropagation, which is particularly memory efficient. It demonstrates state-of-the-art performance, and it's easy to implement with existing tools. And don't worry, whilst the general theory of controlled differential equations is quite complicated, we're not going to assume any familiarity with it here. So let's begin with a quick recap of the neural ordinary differential equation model. We're going to try and learn a map between some object X and some object Y by learning functions f, L1 and L2, such that we have this initial condition depending on the input X, which we then modify in continuous time according to this ordinary differential equation with the vector field f. When we get to some terminal time, capital T, we project Z down, and we ask that this should then approximate our desired target Y. Z is known as the hidden state, and it's analogous to the hidden layers of feedforward or residual networks. Moreover, the ODE structure allows us to train with adjoint backpropagation, which allows us to recompute the forward trajectory during the backward pass, so we don't need to record it in memory. This gives improved memory efficiency. Now, the objects X and Y that we're mapping between don't have any special structure, so this description hasn't yet involved sequential data such as time series. The t-dimension that's been introduced is just an internal detail of the model. We, what we'd like is to align it with the natural ordering of the data in a time series. The problem is that the solution to an ordinary differential equation is determined by its initial condition, so there's no way to adjust the trajectory based on data that arrives later in a time series. It turns out that the resolution to this is already a well-understood problem in mathematics in the field of rough analysis, which is the field which studies controlled differential equations. We're going to assume that we observe some time series, where at each time ti we observe value xi, which may have missing data, and then we're going to interpolate to produce capital X. Very often our time series is assumed to be sampled from some underlying continuous process, in which case capital X is then an approximation to this underlying process. Then we're going to learn a map from this time series x to some object y by learning functions zeta, f, and l, such that we have this initial condition, depending on the first element of the time series, and z is now modified continuously according to this controlled differential equation. The right-hand side is a matrix vector product between f and dx dt. Changes in x will thus provoke changes in z, as changes in x change the local dynamics of the system. When we get to some terminal time capital T, then we can project down as before, if y is just some value, or we can, can continuously apply the projection if y has time dependence itself. So this gives a way to produce sequence to sequence models. So there are the equations for a neural CDE again. Pictorially, what's going on looks like this. We have some underlying data process, which we observe at points xi, which we then join up to create an interpolation, capital X. This then modifies the hidden state in continuous time. In particular, I'd invite you to compare this to a recurrent neural network, which does something very similar, except that it operates in discrete time. So what are the advantages of this model? Let's start with two theoretical ones. First, we can show a universal approximation theorem that neural CDEs are able to approximate any functional sequences. And we're able to do this by using the existing mathematics of controlled differential equations, which is a benefit of using an already well-understood mathematical theory. Second, if one wasn't familiar with controlled differential equations, then it might be more tempting to consider models of this form instead. But we could show that in fact the neural controlled differential equation model is strictly more general than models of this type, which we speculate is part of what leads to its good empirical performance. Next, let's consider some practical advantages to our model. Using a, con a con continuous time theory allows us to treat regular and irregular data in exactly the same way, by pushing the problem of messy data into the interpolation. It doesn't have to affect the architecture of our model. If you know about the problem of informative missingness, then that can be included as well, but I'm not going to discuss that here. If you're familiar with the language of software development, then this might be described as fixing a leaky abstraction. Moreover, this formulation makes batching very easy. One of the challenges of irregular data is how to feed it into a model in batches when the timestamps don't have to line up. 
but here we can, once and upfront, pre-process the entire dataset to produce the continuous time interpolations. It's then these continuous time interpolations that we can batch together and feed into the model, and this is possible because they're no longer affected by the regularity of the data. Next, this equation is still in some sense an ordinary differential equation, so we can solve it with the same tools that we've already got for neural ODEs, and in particular we can use the same software and the same code that's already been written. Now, once again, because this is still in some sense an ODE, we can use memory efficient adjoint backpropagation. To quantify this, if t is the time horizon as before, and if h is the cost of one step of a model, which is either one step of a, a recurrent neural network or the f on the right-hand side of a neural CDE, then usually we'd expect to need h t amount of memory to record something costing h t times. Here, we can reduce that to just h plus t. We still have to perform each step costing h, and we still have to hold the underlying data in memory, costing t, but now we just have to add those together. Finally, neural CDEs demonstrate state-of-the-art performance, which we're going to quantify now. So, first of all, we have the character trajectories dataset. This consists of people writing the letters A, B, C, and so on, and recording the moment-by-moment -moment movement of the pen across the page. The task is to figure out which letter they've drawn. Here, we drop varying amounts of the data to see how things change, we observe that the neural CDE model outperforms every other model considered, which are a variety of ODE and RNN-based models, which is the family of models to which the neural CDE belongs. Furthermore, we see that it does so whilst using an order of magnitude less memory than the best of the competing models, which is because of the adjoint backpropagation. Next, we consider a regularly sampled dataset, the speech commands dataset, corresponding to audio recordings of people saying the words yes, no, left, right, and so on. We see much the same story as before. Neural CDEs outperform the other models whilst using an order of magnitude less memory. This is because the other models have very high variances, because sometimes they simply fail to train, which we are unable to resolve by tweaking the optimization hyperparameters. In contrast, the neural CDE train well every time, and seem to be robust to the choice of optimization hyperparameters. This isn't a phenomenon we understand yet. But let's be fair here. What are the limitations of a neural CDE model? The first is the speed of computation, as they can be a few times slower to compute than similar recurrent neural network models. However, we think this is largely an implementation issue, because neural CDEs are currently implemented in Python, and by default use variable step size solvers with double precision arithmetic, which is probably overkill for most practical tasks. Next are the number of parameters. Recall that the right hand side is a matrix vector product between f and dx dt, so f is matrix valued, which can result in quite a lot of parameters. We haven't yet investigated this, but we suspect that there's going to be ways of handling this problem, for example via low-rank approximations. So, I'll finish up by mentioning that these are the main references. The first is an introduction to the mathematics of controlled differential equations, they're referred to as rough differential equations, and the latter two are work on neural ordinary differential equations. To conclude, our code is available on GitHub and our paper is on Archive, so do check those out, and these links will be available in the description as well. Thank you very much for your attention.